A couple weeks ago, I received a phone call from a lady who asked me how to save dehydrated and dying orchids without fresh living moss. I get similar questions in comment sections of my videos almost every week, so I need to try another method. Of course, it's not a surprise that many people don't have access to fresh living moss. Some people live in big cities or in different climate zones where finding living moss can be a big challenge. So I started to think, what would I do or try if I was in a similar situation? Why do I recommend using live moss for dying dehydrated orchids in the first place? You can watch the video on our channel regarding orchid rehabilitation with live moss. The link is below, but it's mostly for a simple reason. Mosses can absorb and hold 10 to 15 times more moisture than their own weight. In this fact alone, allows me to provide constant high levels of humidity around roots and leaves of the dying dehydrated orchid. Another reason is that living mosses have a certain degree of antibacterial properties, such as sphagnum moss. And this fact is very important because if I'm using dead preserved moss, even sphagnum, it can become moldy and the rehabilitation process may fail because mold and bacteria can cause even more issues. But remember that we can't hate mold or fungus and we can't try to fight them with toxic chemicals because they're just doing their job as reticence, simply decomposing what is already dead. Besides, orchids and fungi have symbiotic relationships, but everything, of course, needs to be in balance. Now, I have these two sick orchids. They came to my shop with a nasty pest called mealybugs. The infestation was as short as a month but it did cause severe dehydration of the leaves. Sometimes when you have so many plants, it's really easy to miss unwanted guests. Luckily, these ones were isolated. And now that I've gotten rid of them, I'm going to try to bring the orchids back to life. And this time, I'm gonna try doing it without moss. Again, I'm going to need a good-sized vase, better with a flat bottom rather than a conical shape that I used before, because I need to maximize the surface area for better water evaporation. I'm not going to use any organic substrate or preserved moss to avoid mold and bacteria. Instead, I'm going to use clean aquarium gravel or rocks. I'm going to fill it approximately four inches of the vase with rocks. Please look carefully at these two orchid specimens. They're very unique in appearance, besides being very dehydrated. One of them have unusual markings on the bottom leaf with a different pigmentation line on the juvenile leaf. And another one has a crooked flower spike. So they're quite different and it allows me to ensure the purity of the experiment. And also notice how dehydrated the orchid leaves are. They're very soft, they have large deep wrinkles, they're very floppy. After I place the four inch layer of stones, I pour very warm to hot water right at the bottom of my vase, but I only cover around two to three inches of the rocks. The remaining inch of the rock layer above the water level allows me to build a secure air buffer barrier between the water and the orchid's tissues, like the monopodial stems and roots. Of course, I don't want the orchid roots to touch the water directly to avoid rotting and suffocation. And orchid roots need to be freely in the air with high humidity because they absorb moisture directly from the air. This is how I make the air very humid in our winter home. Hot air evaporates, it increases the humidity in the vase immediately. And the next step will be to trap this evaporated water inside the vase. And I can do this by covering the vase with perforated cellophane. I need to make sure there are small holes in there to ensure gas exchange. Now I'm going to place these vases with my dehydrated orchids in a warm and sunny area like this windowsill. I don't think that the rehabilitation of the leaves will go as quickly as it would have if I used living sphagnum moss like we showed in our video experiment before. And I definitely don't expect them to go back to normal hydration levels too soon or within three days, but we shall see. Over the next couple of days, I changed the water and I even kept them in a warm bath, additionally to prolong the effect of high temperature and high humidity. Because it's not just high humidity that's important for dehydrated orchids, but the temperature is another very important catalyst of all the chemical reactions that is going on within the plant cells. 
Soon I noticed that the bottom leaves in both orchids started to change pigmentation to yellow, and I realized that this method is actually working. And I'm going to explain why in a second. As you probably noticed at the beginning of the experiment, the orchid leaves were mostly green, and now they're starting to lose the chlorophyll and changing it to another pigment like anthocyanin or xanthophyll. And you're probably going to think that this means that my orchids are dying, but it's the opposite. Being severely dehydrated or sick, orchids typically switch to energy saving mode and they use a specific type of photosynthesis called cam photosynthesis. I've explained this protective mechanism in detail in another video titled How to Make Orchids Grow Faster. You can check it out, the link is below. But this unique mechanism allows orchids to survive for a long time in unfavorable conditions. So once they go back to normal growth, orchids need the energy that they cannot get when they're in cam photosynthesis mode. So where do orchids get this extra energy? Orchids can store sugar and nutrients in their leaves and flower spikes. And this is why it's not recommended to cut yellowing leaves from the stem until they fall off on their own. For the very simple reason that orchid plants need to uptake all the energy from their old leaves. And this is why when going back to normal conditions, your orchid will lose their older leaves once all the energy is used up for rehabilitation. Now take a look at what happened 10 days later. As I thought, my first orchid with a larger biomass restored its leaves turgor completely, no wrinkles, firm leaves, and used up everything from the pairs of the bottom leaves that are now completely yellow and will probably fall off on their own soon. The second orchid wasn't too fortunate though, due to a smaller biomass, but I can still observe the progress. The younger leaves have become more firm, with the second leaf losing its chlorophyll. The crooked flower spike has changed its color because the orchid has taken all the remaining energy from the spike in form of sugar. It's likely that the specimen will need more time to fully recover, but it looks like it definitely will recover. I'm happy to tell you that this method is working. Some patience is needed. You have to repeatedly change the cool water back to warm water a few times, try to leave them somewhere warm and sunny, but that's basically all I did. Of course, living moss provides orchids with something else that aquarium rocks do not have. And I think living moss comes with a lot of microorganisms like soil microbiota that also play an important role. I will continue to observe these two orchids and I will update you in my other videos. Thank you for watching.